My name is Dorian Vale. My pronouns are they, them. I'm from Chico, California, occupied Michipta territory. Yes. And you've been doing a lot of work in that area uh, in terms of regenerative agriculture, rewilding. Uh, yeah. Please tell us something about that. Yeah, so I'm a student of Ali Mater's Knight, who is a uh, master traditional ecological knowledge practitioner. Um, she's a Machupta tribal member. She's, uh, she's taught us a lot. She's led us through several projects. Um, the primary one that I work with is Verbena Fields, uh, which is a small city park in Chico that uh, for a long time was used as a rock quarry and dumping ground for construction companies. Um, it was then more or less scraped to mineral soil and graded by heavy equipment. Um, and the city wasn't able to afford the staff to maintenance it. And uh, Ali stepped in and said, you know, we'll take care of this park. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long journey for Ali. Uh, she's been working there for about 12 years. I've been involved for not quite two years now. Um, and we do volunteer-based, hands-on traditional ecological knowledge learning. So uh, everything we do is experientially based. We come out every single week, uh, Friday mornings, rain or shine, and we just work on uh, maintaining the park, bringing back native species of plants and slowly removing invasives. Uh, we do everything basically by hand or with hand tools. Um, and it's brought together a really great community within Chico. Um, it's a really great way to connect with people and a really great way to reconnect with the land. Um, I studied some botany in college and took a few courses, always knew that I was passionate about plants, but never quite fully connected with it. Um, and I realized that the blockage that I had about it was that I was really passionate about the plants that were native to where I grew up and I wanted to learn all of them and get to know all of them. Um, and now after, you know, year and a half, two years of being involved, I know by name and uh, by sight upwards of a hundred species of plants native to the Chico area. And that's been an absolute thrill and a joy for me to just be able to get to know everything around me. And now I'm starting to learn uh, insects and birds as well. Um, and it's been a, a really joyful experience that has helped me um, gain a lot of healing and a lot of really important knowledge about what we want the future to look like. And you were telling me that you were planting along the river and that you were, you were planting 50 species of native plants and that they are coming up, that they are, that this is a successful experiment. Yeah, yeah, so um, we had the East San Slough Revegetation Project, which was carried out by um, a traditional ecological knowledge crew constituted of tribal members led by Ali. Um, and the East San Slough is a small little, uh, I think it's like a, a fish throughway or a side branch off of the Sacramento River in Red Bluff, California. Uh, it was an area that was set aside for restoration. It was again, scraped to mineral soil with heavy equipment um, before Ali's crew came in. And uh, for some context, uh, to my understanding, restoration projects of this scale often cost in the range of tens of millions of dollars require massive amounts of labor, huge amounts of heavy equipment. They tend to source all of their plants from nurseries, which is in itself very carbon intensive. This nursing process, process of plants, you know, everything from the plastic pot, pots and the uh, petrochemical based fertilizers to uh, big trucks to have to move these now very heavy plants around. Uh, they're water intensive um, and traditional I say traditional uh, standard American methods of restoration often um, at best can attain a biodiversity of, you know, maybe a dozen or so species. Um, and very often these nursery plants, when they're put into these tough conditions that we face in California, uh, die very easily because they've been in a very controlled environment as they've, you know, grown from seed to sprout. Um, oftentimes they'll get somewhere in the range of a 30% survival rate uh, with irrigation in the first year. Um, and so Ali has an entirely different methodology. Her and her crew came in. Um, they collected scions from plants, cuttings to propagate. Uh, we've got a few native species like willow and mule fat that propagate very well from cuttings. 
uh, as well as dividing bunch grasses, all from the area immediately around the restoration project. So focusing on plants that are already surviving in these tough drought conditions that we now have in California. Um, and so they propagated plants from the area surrounding, and then they also brought in a really great diversity of seeds that we had gathered throughout the year prior. The people who volunteer at Verbena Fields especially had just uh, gathered seeds of our own accord and shared them. Um, and these are again all plant gathered from, of course, plants that are surviving in this drought and able to put out seeds, be productive. So these are the hardiest, healthiest plants that we are now propagating by collecting their seeds and spreading them. Uh, so Ali's crew came in. They had a much smaller budget than tens of millions of dollars. I don't know the exact amount, but uh, my understanding was that it was less than 100,000. Um, they had nine people working for two weeks, uh, no heavy machinery, hand tools only. They put in uh, these seeds and these scions and you know other forms of propagation. Uh, we had a diversity of over 50 species of plants and we've had an 80% survival rate in this project. So when we compare those two uh, options, one of the big heartbreaks and struggles around restoration projects is the question of scale. You know, these projects are too slow, they're so expensive, they're so resource intensive, both for labor and, you know, carbon inputs, um, to the point where it almost seems futile because you're putting so much carbon in just to get these plants that are may probably not gonna survive, you know, statistically only 30% make it, and are gonna take a long time to really establish a healthy ecosystem because you're not getting that big biodiversity of plants. So on the flip side, we have something that is fast, requires relatively very little manpower, um, it is far, far less carbon intensive, and brings a massive biodiversity of plants that is, you know, kind of unheard of in big restoration projects. 50 different species of seeds down in two weeks and an 80% survival rate. It's, I mean, it's something that I've seen firsthand and it still surprises me often because of just how big that difference is and that's what's scalable. That's the kind of restoration that we can spread everywhere because we don't need to have, you know, an inconceivable number of people all hands on deck all the time. If we could have that, all the better. It would be that much faster. But this is something that can be this general model of using traditional ecological knowledge and gathering seeds that are already surviving in the tough environments that we now face with climate collapse. Uh, that is the model to move us forward into being able to on a relative scale, have much more rapid restoration projects that are functional and bring back the biodiversity of ecosystems, improve the quality of our water, um, you know, improve soil health. When you have this biodiversity, you're also uh, supporting a lot more pollinators. In California, we have a big diversity of pollinators because of how our seasons work. Um, and so this is just, it's, it's phenomenal, it's thrilling. I wish I could tell everyone about it all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, is that good? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I think that was very good. I've, I've been ironing out my TEK elevator pitch for a while because uh -huh. I talk about it all the time. Uh -huh. I'm like, I don't want to talk about anything else. Let's talk about TEK. Okay.